Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to look at scale weights. Is this enough or is this too much? Let's have a look. Today we're going to talk about why you want your car to have a weight to scale, how much that weight should be, where to place the weights, and we're going to talk about removable loads. First off, why I use scale weights? Well, it makes everything roll better. If you have cars out of the box, you might recognize this. Cars judder a bit because they're so light, and also coupling can become difficult as the cars are too light to let the couples work properly, so they just bounce off each other. And last but not least, the cars, if they're heavier, they will track better in the rails. So how much weight to use? They have already researched search that at the NMRA, the National Model Railroad Association. So I have a look on the website and there you'll find this easy chart. For all the different scales, they found there's a certain optimum weight for different scales because you don't want to use too much weight because then you just significantly reduce the pulling power of your locomotive. So let's have a look at HO scale. This is a very easy formula. It's basically half an ounce per inch of car and then plus one. So the easiest thing to do is make this chart. You mark the inches and then you put the ounces down below. I put the ounces here in black and I have here in blue in the smaller writing the grams for the people in the metric system. So it's half an ounce per inch plus one. Here it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times half is three plus one is four ounces. So what you do is very easy. Once you've made this, you just take a random car. In my case, it's stock car and it's one, two, three, four, five, and a half so it should be between three and a half and four ounces it's on ounces so it's four exactly so it can do so what to use as weights you can use anything these came out of a car I took apart it's just pieces of cheap metal this was in another car it didn't have enough weight so i just glued on these nuts i like them because they're cheap and they have them in all different types of sizes and thus in different types of weights so it fits the purpose if you need a lot of weight you probably want to have some bigger blocks like this where to hide the weights? You've probably not noticed it, but this car already has weights. Here, take off the shell. You see it doesn't look as pretty when you take it off, but I guess you didn't see it when I displayed the car, so it fits the function. So now let's have a look at different car types and different scenarios to see where we can place some weight. This one has to be more than four and a half uh, ounces, which it is a very skinny and flat car because it's a flat car. So that's not really going to make our lives easy. How much is it? It's two and a half. This one I already took. You can see it. There's where it is. Let's see how much this one weighs. A little bit over four. But how did I do that? Is it because of the trailer? Well, trailer helps because now it's 3.2. So the trailer itself weighs almost an ounce. But no. What I do is I just glued a load of bolts to the bottom side everywhere where there was space. Uh, and in such a manner that you don't see it uh, when it's rolling down the track. I like to do this and I do this a lot with cars, flat cars in particular where it's possible. But as you saw, it's still not enough. So there's a few options. You could try to hide some weight uh, on the deck somehow if you want to keep your flat car uh, flat and empty. Or you could weight uh, the load itself. I'm not really a fan of weighing uh, loads, but in this case, you don't really have a lot of choice. The downside is if you take the load off uh, because the car is empty, that the weight goes down as well. Here's a small flat car. So you think small is easy, three ounces. Luckily, the manufacturer already put a slab in there around this size. I can feel it, but still it's not enough. It still needs almost an extra ounce. So here you could have a scenario where you make a load uh, to disguise the weight somehow. Maybe something like this, make it a very heavy box. Uh, this one's empty, so it's not gonna do anything. One thing I did not mention yet, when you add weights, you wanna add it as you saw with the stock car as low as possible and above the turning point of the trucks. This will give the highest uh, stability and have the most effect. So another car, hoppers. I've noticed that there's a difference between the more value-based cars and the more, uh, let's say, prototype slash uh, costly cars. The more costly ones most often have the appropriate weight. With the hopper and you see with this tank car as well, they will be more or less the correct weight or even well, way over in this case, which is fine. If you wanna add weight to a tank car, it's not gonna be easy. What you would do, generally speaking, is drill a hole and then fill it with sand or goop 
or something like that. But even here in the bottom, you'll probably see it if you drill a hole, so you need to fix it again, patch it up. Or maybe you can drill it underneath the, uh, the support bar, the frame of the tank car to mask it a bit. With the hopper, I didn't mention that you attempt to open it. Um, it's not going to be easy because the more detailed the cars are, the more difficult it's going to be to not damage it. There is a very little space here. This slit down below where you could hide a piece of sheet metal or something like that. Luckily, this was one was in the correct weight. Now let's have a look at this coal hopper. These are very difficult to get the correct weight in if they're open and empty because um, there's really no place to put anything. You, you could try to attempt to make let's say a, uh, a double wall and add some weight uh, that way so what i used to do is throw some nuts in here and then you take this fake uh, coal piece uh, hide it and then it will be the right weight but then i decided i wanted my hoppers to be empty when they're empty and full to be full so when they're empty they're going to be underweight there's no other way around that it, I don't want to mess around. What you could maybe do is, is try to glue some pebbles of lead or something down there and, and, and with some weathering and some coal, try to mask it up. I don't think that's very prototypical. I think once he shoots open, all the coal will just drain out, so there's not going to be anything down there. Um, what I did is I took this coal load and I glued some nuts on it, as you see, quite a lot because it needs quite a lot. And then you see there's also a coin there. This coin is magnetic. So what I did, I took a coin, I took a strong magnet, I just glued it onto this handle piece, and voila, you have a removable coal load. So how will that work? Just have your car just like that. Get this, remove it, easy peasy, just like that. The advantage is you gotta remove a coal load. The downside is, I think if you have a long coal drag of about 20, 30 cars, that might be an issue, because you might, if they're all empty, you might pull them off the rails in a curve. Well, that's not really gonna be an issue if one or two or three of these are empty. So I'm fine with this solution, and I find it's really nice to have empty cars when they're empty. That's all what I wanna talk about today. So I wanna thank you, the viewer, for watching, because it's you that makes this channel. And if you wanna see more content just like this, don't forget to subscribe and like. That's all for now. Bye-bye.